A uh, couple of weeks ago, some of you might remember, I made a video in this room and uh, some of you, quite a lot of you actually, made a comment about this, this little hole in the wooden thing. <laughs> so I thought I'd best, <laughs> thought I'd best sort that out. Would you say that's less distracting? <laughs> right, and also a few weeks ago, I partnered with Adobe UK and Adobe Stock to create some images for their multi-localism campaign. Uh, now, multi-localism is a term I only heard recently, and basically what it means is that the world is becoming a much, much smaller place through travel and technology, and essentially now we're just like a big interconnected village. So, I was challenged to come up with some images that show my everyday views, but also some extraordinary travel locations and places at the same time. Which is what I did, I created three images. This is the first one, I call it Costa Canal. <laughs> it's terrible to laugh at your own jokes. Uh, this one called Tierra City. And this one called Commuter Falls. And that last one, Commuter Falls, I'm gonna go through in Photoshop now, show you roughly how I did it. And uh, yeah, that's today's video. Right then. Here we have the uh, the River Medlock in Manchester, which, as far as I can tell, is never used for anything. Nobody ever talks about it. But I've walked past it a few times. As I was walking past it, I was thinking this would be a good place for uh, for one of these Adobe shots. And I decided that in the background somewhere should be some sort of really natural, impressive thing. Couldn't really think what that was, so I went onto Adobe Stock, had a bit of a think and a look at all the images, and came across this one of Skogavos in Iceland. So what I did was I downloaded a preview, and that preview appeared here in my library in Photoshop. So all I have to do is drag that onto this image, and as you can see, we've got a watermarked preview ready to go. Now I always start with preview images when I'm working in Adobe Stock, because you never really know whether the perspective's gonna be right, uh, whether the image is gonna be right for the scene. So always start with the preview, and then if you discover using the preview that it is right then you can always download the full license afterwards. One of my favourite features that about Adobe Stock is that you can work so easily with the previews without having to license everything that you want to try. So once I've dropped this preview onto the image I'm just going to hit enter and then I'm going to go and lower the opacity just so I can get a sense of where it's currently sitting on top of the original Manchester image. And I'm going to move it to kind of be positioned where I would want it if I thought it was to work. So somewhere about there, because I'm thinking, if I just get rid of this image for a minute, I'm thinking that around these buildings is where I want the, uh, is where I want the waterfall to appear. So when I'm looking at the image in its lower opacity, I'm kind of working on that basis, trying to work out where the waterfall could go, given that I want to get rid of some of these buildings in the background. So that's how I'm typically working out my positioning. I do need to keep in mind that I do need this image to fit with the image below it, obviously. So I'm gonna to need to make this image bigger. And obviously at this stage, I'm not too worried about resolution or anything because if I decide to use this image, then I won't be using the preview. I'll be using the fully licensed file. So I reckon something along the lines of that is gonna do pretty nicely. So I'm gonna hit enter. I'm then gonna go and make sure I raise the opacity back to full. So at this stage, I know that I'm pretty happy with this Adobe Stock image. So I'm gonna go back to my library at the top here, right click, and I'm just gonna click License Image. And all that's gonna do is bring in the full res file so that I can start editing with the full res file that hasn't got the watermark and is obviously more, more res. Now once that's done, I'm gonna take the Skogavos layer and move it below the Manchester layer so that it's no longer visible. And that's because I'm gonna be masking from this Manchester image. So it's much, much easier to do if the Skogavos image is sat below the Manchester image. And to mask, I'm gonna use the pen tool. Now a lot of people get a bit nervous about using the pen tool, but for an image like this, there's really no need to because predominantly, all you're doing is working with straight lines. So I'm just gonna mask around these buildings so that I'm not including the sky in the image because the Skogavos image I'm wanting to appear underneath the things that I'm going to mask out. So this will be a fairly tedious thing to show you the entire process of because as you can see I'm going around this building but the reality is is that I've got all of that to do. So in true cooking show fashion here's one I made earlier. Ta-da! Now, uh, broadly speaking, that is, I mean, that's the majority of the work done, really. But to make this look much more realistic, realistic as it can possibly get when you're including a massive waterfall like that in Manchester, can you imagine how many tourists would go to that if that's what it looked like? I mean, it doesn't, but 
never mind. But yeah, to make it a lot more realistic, there are a few tweaks that I'm gonna make. So, first off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer, then I'm gonna go to my brush tool, and I'm gonna select a really soft brush with 0% hardness, about 900 pixels in size. I'm gonna have my opacity somewhere between 20 and 25%, and I'm gonna pick a color by hitting Alt on my keyboard, and just choosing a color from somewhere in the waterfall. And then, making sure that I'm on my top new layer, I'm just gonna make a few clicks to create some mist. Now this mist serves a couple of purposes. The first is that it makes the image look a bit more realistic. Obviously if you had a waterfall like this and a scene like this, there'd be quite a lot of mist. And so including this helps build the realism. But the second thing it does is helps kind of remove any imperfections in the image. Now obviously when you've got an image like this, sometimes the perspective is a little bit off or the light is a little bit different or there are just kind of a couple of different giveaways. So creating mist like this just helps kind of merge the two images together a little bit more seamlessly. Now one of the other issues we've got at the moment, as you might be able to see, is down here at the bottom of the image we've got this reflection of the buildings uh, that don't exist anymore because the waterfall has masked them out, um, but obviously in the reflection they're still there. So we need to create our own reflection. Now to do that we need to merge all of the visible layers. So I'm going to go Command Alt Shift E and that's gonna create a brand new layer combining everything in the layers below it. Then I'm gonna to go to the marquee tool, the rectangular marquee tool, and I'm gonna select everything in the image above this waterline. Then I'm gonna go Command C and V, to copy and paste it, and then I'm gonna to go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Vertical. I'm gonna move this image down. Again, I might just need to reduce the opacity to see roughly whereabouts this should be going. Something like that. Lift the opacity again. Now clearly there's some masking to do because lots of things have got a reflection at the moment that shouldn't have a reflection. For example, these buildings, it's only really the stuff over the water that should have a reflection. So I'm gonna create a layer mask down here and then I'm gonna to go to my brush tool. Again, select a really soft brush, 0% hardness. And this time I can go opacity of 100. And I'm just gonna make that a tiny bit bigger. So something like 700 pixels, and I'm just gonna mask out anything that shouldn't have a reflection, like so. Now when I've done it really roughly like that, I'm gonna reduce my opacity, and then paint in white over the areas that I've perhaps been a bit too harsh on, so down here for example. Like that, and there all of a sudden we've got a reflection which much better represents what you'd actually see in this scene because the buildings aren't there in the background. Um, I'm also going to mask out this bit of the reflection just down here because that's not, that's not needed. Okay, next we need to start making this reflection look a little bit more believable. So, I'm going to create a new document in Photoshop, so I'm going to go to File, New, and then I'm going to create a new document of about 600 pixels width and thousand pixels high, it doesn't particularly matter what it is, so long as it's portrait. I'm going to fill it with black. Why'd that go red? I mean, it doesn't matter, I'll just go edit fill and, uh, and black. That was weird. Anyway, then I'm going to go to filter, uh, noise, add noise, and I'm going to add as much noise as I possibly can, so 400%. Then I'm going to go back to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to have a blur of about 0.8 pixels, something like that. That looks pretty good to me. And then I'm going to go to my channels. I'm going to select red, and then I'm going to go back to filter, stylize, emboss, and I'm going to select an angle of 90. I'm just going to type it in actually, it's easy. 90, height of 1, and then an amount of 500%. Click OK, I'm then going to go to green. I'm going to do exactly the same, but I'm going to change the angle. So I'm going to go to stylize, emboss, and then change the angle to 180. OK, pretty good. Then I'm going to click back on RGB, go back to layers, and zoom way out. Go to edit, transform, and perspective. And then I'm just going to drag the bottom out to like a crazy amount, like this. 
then I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to zoom in a touch, then I'm just going to hit Command T to bring up the normal transform tool. I'm just going to bring this down to about halfway. Perfect! And all I need to do now is to save this as a PSD. So I'm going to go save as, and I'll call it Manchester Ripple. And it needs to be saved as a Photoshop file. Save. Then back in the Commuter Falls image, I'm going to go to my top layer, this reflection layer, and just go Command J. And then going to hide the one underneath it. Then I'm going to right click on this top layer, and I'm going to go Convert to Smart Object. Then I'm going to go Filter, Blur, and motion blur. And I'm just going to select an amount of blur that I think is appropriate. So here, something like, I don't know, yeah, 46. Seems to work quite well. Click OK. Then I'm going to go back to filter, loads of filters going on here, uh, distort, displace, and then I'm going to go 45 and 45 for both horizontal and vertical scale. And then I'm going to select my new displacement mask. So before what we were doing is creating a displacement mask and now we're going to use it. So click on that mask that you created and go open. And that's going to create this water effect on the reflection layer. Now I'm not all that happy with that to be honest. So I'm going to go back to displace and I'm going to change 45 to 20. And 20 again on the vertical. And just a ripple. Okay, that's a little bit better. Now you can play around with this, play around with those numbers all you like until you get a result you're happy with. Uh, but for the purposes of this, that will do. I'm then going to make the layer below it uh, visible again. And I'm just going to reduce the opacity of this top layer with the filters on it just until I get an effect I'm happy with. Something like that looks pretty good. Uh, and then from here, it's basically all just about light. So I'm going to go to my adjustment layers, get a curves layer, and I'm just going to bring the curve down like so, maybe even a bit more than that, and I'm going to make that layer invisible by going Command I on the layer mask of the curves layer, and I'm going to go to my gradient tool, and with the white selected, I'm just going to drag up, and all that's going to do is give a bit of darkness at the bottom of the image, which kind of takes away some of the glare from the reflection, makes it look a little bit more realistic. And once again, the TV cooking show trick. Here's one I made earlier, and what you can see I've done down here with all these curve layers is just add and take away light from different parts of the image just to kind of make it look all a bit more realistic. Now, there's no real tip to this, it's all kind of just based on eye, what you think uh, the image should look like. But it should be said that it's worth spending the time kind of creating these curves and shadow layers just to kind of tweak the light. Because as you can see up here, for example, I've tried to create like a, a faint line along this building which kind of mirrors the line of the shadow on the waterfall and all that kind of stuff, all that really subtle stuff really helps draw the image together and make it look a little bit more real. So all of these layers down here, these shadows and curves layers, that's basically what they're about. Um, I think that's it. Oh, one final layer, which is just above the Skogavos layer, as you can see down here, is the bus window shadow. So I added a bit of darkness on the bus window because typically windows reduce the light coming through and therefore you end up with a bit of a shadow on the bus. Um, but that's pretty much it. It's a very simple image really to pull together considering that it, I guess to some people if you're not all that experienced in Photoshop it might look um, quite complex but it's really not. It's just layer masking and then a few different tweaks on top of that. Displacement masks can be a bit tricky and just take a bit of practice but again once you get the hang of those then reflections are no trouble either. Uh, and that's a wrap. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Hopefully it was enjoyable and or useful and also thank you to Adobe UK and Adobe Stock for challenging me to make those images. I had a really good time doing it. And it's been a little while since I've tried to create images like that and I um, wonder if I'm back on the horse now. I really did like it. Uh, but until next time, when I will be, I don't know, I can't remember what the next video is so I won't make any promises. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.